There is a dark side to US monetary policy in that it contributes in a meaningful way to economic problems faced by countries all around the world. Every time the Federal Reserve does an interest rate hike, the focus is generally on how it's likely to impact American businesses and consumers. But as the US takes action to repair its economy, it's also dealing blow after blow to countries like Turkey who are in much more fragile positions. So today, I want to talk about how US monetary policy decisions often negatively impact foreign nations, as well as the poor financial decisions that Turkey itself has made, which is ultimately why it faces hyperinflation and a slowing economy. Eight times a year, the board members of the United States Central Bank meet to decide on the changes to their monetary policy. The biggest part of their decision is whether or not they will change their federal funds interest rate. An increase in the rate tightens borrowing conditions across the US economy and aims to reduce consumer spending and business investment, with the end goal being a reduction of inflation to ease the cost of living crisis. But the change to that interest rate doesn't just impact Americans. In fact, it has a pretty profound impact on many different countries around the world. Primarily, this is because the US dollar is currently the world's reserve currency. A reserve currency is a large quantity of currency maintained by central banks. By holding and trading in a single currency, countries around the world can reduce their exposure to changes in their own currencies. Since 1944, the world's reserve currency has been the US dollar. So most trade globally is done in US dollars and most most countries maintain US dollar reserves with their central banks. Which means that even when trade doesn't directly involve the United States and for example is between two separate countries, they're still impacted by the policy changes of the US government and the Federal Reserve. But beyond the indirect impacts, the US is also the largest economy in the world and does directly engage in trade with many countries. Turkey for example exported about 18 billion US dollars worth of goods in 2022 such as steel, machinery, and textiles. But in the first four months of this year, that figure has declined by almost 18%. And they're actually now importing more goods from the US than they're exporting. So a simple shift in US demand for Turkish goods can have a profound impact on the money that Turkey has to service their other needs. There are three main impacts that US monetary policy has on countries like Turkey a capital flow impact, a cost of debt impact, and a currency exchange impact. The first is capital flows. As the Federal Reserve raises interest rates in the US, it tightens financial conditions to reduce consumer spending and business investment. If Americans are spending less money than previously because of this change and businesses are investing in growth at a lot lesser rate than in previous years because of that, then overall, holding all else equal, the US will be importing less goods from other countries. This is the situation I just described before. If the US is importing less goods from Turkey, there's less capital flowing into Turkey. The shift in trade also negatively impacts their foreign exchange reserves. Remember how countries will hold US dollars for international trade? Well, if Turkey is now importing more goods from the US than it's exporting, that deficit has to be paid for with the foreign exchange reserves. And when taken to extremes like in Pakistan, those reserves can be completely depleted and that can cripple their local economy. The second impact is the cost of debt. As US interest rates rise, the cost of borrowing money money rises globally. Unlike the US, many countries don't borrow money in their own currency. They borrow money in US dollars and from other foreign lenders such as governments and banks in other countries. So as borrowing costs rise, so does the cost to service their debt payments. As of March 2022, Turkey had about 450 billion US dollars of external debt. And while that is a big number, it's actually quite low compared to the country's GDP. But for some countries that do have a very large debt burden, an increase in interest rates in the US can be very crippling when it comes to the increase they experience on the servicing of those debt payments. The last major impact US monetary policy has on other countries is on exchange rates. Exchange rates reflect the relative value of different currencies and changes in US interest rates have a significant impact on the relative strength of the US dollar compared to other currencies. The simplest way to understand what we mean
mean by value or strength of a currency is to think of it as demand for that currency. At the most basic level, higher interest rates means you will earn more interest on say a savings account. So holding all else equal, there will now be more demand for US dollars relative to other currencies. So it gets stronger relative to other currencies. For example, in part because the US has been more aggressive with their rate hikes than Australia, one US dollar can buy 1.5 Australian dollars Whereas in 2021, one US dollar only bought 1.3 Australian dollars. If a country's local currency gets stronger relative to other currencies, then they will be earning more when they export goods and they'll be paying less when they're importing goods. The exact opposite is happening to Turkey. The Turkish lira has been declining severely relative to the US dollar, meaning the cost to import goods is surging while the revenue generated from exports is declining. Although in Turkey's case specifically, there are a a number of self-inflicted wounds that are actually causing the decline in their currency. And while US monetary policy has likely made their recovery more difficult, their economic problems started long before the Fed rate hikes, with the Turkish government's bad decision making very clearly being the root cause of their current instability. Turkey has been in an economic crisis since 2018, and it has a lot to do with the country's current account deficit. The current account of a country records all of the money in and outflows from the country. Primarily, this is the trade of goods and services, but it also includes investments and other flows of capital. If a country has more capital outflows than inflows, then they're running a current account deficit, which can lower their foreign exchange reserves and require the country to borrow more money or to print their own currency. Turkey's current account deficit has been widening since 2018, reaching an astounding $10 billion a month in January this year. But by far the biggest problem Turkey has has faced is their own president's lack of basic economic education. President Erdogan has been quoted saying that interest is the mother of all evil and that high interest rates actually cause inflation. And this misunderstanding of economics is also contributing to their current account deficit. Because without raising interest rates, it's very difficult to get outside investors to invest money in Turkey. And even local companies will look to invest outside of Turkey for better risk adjusted returns. Turns. But an even bigger problem with Turkey's stance on monetary policy is the impact on the stability of their currency. The Turkish lira has experienced some of the worst hyperinflation of any country around the world. The already high 20% inflation rate of 2021 surged to over 85% towards the end of 2022. And while it has cooled in recent months, prices are still rising at a rate of almost 40% per year. Economics 101 would tell you that the first thing Turkey needs to do in order to get inflation under control is to raise their interest rates. This would raise the borrowing rate for consumers and businesses in Turkey and therefore slow economic activity. But with the Turkish president believing that higher rates cause inflation, at various times in the past few years, he's been consistently lowering interest rates, reducing the borrowing costs for individuals and businesses, spurring even worse inflation, which has caused the local currency to lose over 80% of its value in the last five years. There is some good news for Turkey, however, because while their president for so long has held a tight grip on monetary policy, starting this week, it looks like the Central Bank of Turkey is getting some of its much needed independence back. The Central Bank raised interest rates rates from 8.5% to 15% in a single move, reflecting a massive U-turn in how Turkey has handled its economy. A statement from the newly appointed governor said, the committee decided to begin the monetary tightening process in order to establish the disinflation course as soon as possible, to anchor inflation expectations and to control the deterioration in pricing behavior. They also indicated that there would likely be further interest rate hikes over time. The hope is that President Erdogan allows the central bank to act independently to repair the economy over time. But the new central bank governor will have to be careful not to act too severely because the last governor to raise rates quickly was fired within a few months. It often seems obvious from the outside what needs to be done in order to fix inflation or to stimulate the economy. But it's always a lot more complex than it looks. A clash between what the government wants and what the central bank needs to do isn't an 
issue that's unique to Turkey. It's an issue that almost every nation faces. In Australia, for example, the central bank governor has been correctly raising interest rates to reduce inflation. But that has been a pretty unfavorable stance among the Australian population who are seeing a rising cost of living and now a rising cost of borrowing at the same time. So when the treasurer of the current government elects a new governor in September of this year, they may look to replace the current governor with one who won't be as firm against fighting inflation. So the central bank is never as independent from the government as it really should be. And if you're wondering how I'm keeping up to date with everything that's going on around the world in terms of stock markets, businesses, and economies, then I'm doing most of it, or a lot of my research, through a platform called Seeking Alpha. Seeking Alpha is a massive online community of stock pickers, and the premium plan has a ton of awesome features for investors. Expert analysis and news for thousands of different stocks to help you learn the ins and outs of what's going on with companies and the economy. You can now import and track your own portfolio, including adding buy or sell price alerts. There are consensus buy, hold and sell ratings from members, Wall Street analysts and Seeking Alpha's own algorithm. You can screen for stocks using a wide variety of fundamental and technical analysis metrics, access up to 10 years of financial data and company filings. Also, there's a ton of educational content to improve your skills, including webinars, podcasts and articles. And best of all, if you use my link down in the description below, you can try the platform for free for 14 days so you've got nothing to lose by checking it out. So head over to hamishhotter.com forward slash seeking alpha and try seeking alpha premium today.